We on, Jerry? Yep. Okay, welcome to the Board of Finance regular meeting, August 5th. Can we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Mrs. LeClaire, can you start us off? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we sit down, can we just take a moment of silence for Selectman Kevin Kiley and his family. Uh, Selectman Kiley's mother passed away over the weekend. Just a moment of silence. Thank you. Okay, welcome everybody. We have six items on the agenda tonight. And in lieu of reading every item, everybody has a copy of the agenda. I'll just ask the board of the six items, does anyone have any questions or comments about any of the items on the agenda? No? If not, we'll move on to item number one, which is to approve the minutes from the budget hearings of March 25th, 2014, March 27th, March 29th, April 3rd to approve the minutes of the regular meeting from May 8th, 2014 to approve the minutes from the quarterly meeting from May 13th, 2014 and to approve the minutes of the regular meeting from June 3rd, 2014. Can I have a motion to bring this to the table? Can I have a second please? Mrs. LeClaire, Mrs. Albin and Mrs. LeClaire, thank you. So we'll vote on these one at a time. Because they accurately state. We could vote on them as a package. They accurately state whether someone was absent or present. So if you were absent and you're voting in favor of all these, you're still accurately reflecting the minutes. So we don't have to separate them. Okay. Um, so if somebody was absent, how do they vote? They can vote yes. Be they can vote yes because it accurately states that they were absent and that that statement alone uh, recognizes that they were not involved in any of the meeting. Okay. In this case, I think just to make it easier for myself and make sure it's right on the record, we'll just go one on, through every single one of them. So to approve the minutes of the budget hearing for March 25th, 2014, all those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? It's been approved. To approve the minutes of the budget hearing from March 27, 2014. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Approved. To approve the minutes of the budget hearing from March 29, 2014. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Abstention. To approve the uh, minutes of the budget hearing from April 3rd, 2014. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? To approve the minutes of the regular meeting from May 8th, 2014. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? And finally, to approve the minutes of the regular meeting from June 3rd, 2014. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Takes care of item number one. Go to item number two. Go ahead. Did I miss the 13th? Did I miss the 13th? Okay. To approve the minutes of the quarterly meeting, quarterly meeting for May 13, 2014. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, thank you. We go to item number two. 
which is to hear, consider, and adopt the bond resolution entitled a resolution amending and restating the bond resolution adopted by the representative town meeting on February 24, 2014, entitled a resolution appropriating a sum not to exceed $1,478,766 for the cost of certain non-recurring capital projects and authorizing the issuance of bonds to finance such appropriations to reallocate bond proceeds between project categories and reduce appropriation and bond authorization by $85,000. Therefore, it is resolved that the original resolution is amended and restated to read as follows. A resolution appropriating a sum not to exceed $1,393,766 for the cost of certain non-recurring capital projects and authorizing the issuance of bonds to finance such appropriation. Can I have a motion? Mr. Walsh in the second. Mrs. LeClaire. Okay, so this item is before us for discussion. So what we have, as you see by the last paragraph, we have the Mill Hill Elementary partial roof replacement that's being reduced from $461,614 to $326,614, a reduction of $135,000. Then you have the Fairfield Ward High School boiler replacement that is increasing from $152,000 to $202,000, $50,000 increase. But overall, the appropriation is decreased by $85,000 to $1,393,766. If you look at Exhibit A, you can see how that's laid out in the description. In item number four, the Mill Hill Elementary partial roof replacement. And item number six, the Fairfield Ward High School boiler replacement. So any, any comments? Any Anything to add to that, Mr. Mayor? No, you, you did that very well, actually, and uh, not that I'm surprised. <laughs> but but uh, no, just the, the, the only comment I'd make is that the, uh, since 2011, the uh, bond authorization, non-recurring authorizations require a, a sign specific amounts to each project as opposed to just assigning a total amount to a group of projects. And they also require uh, that uh, any uh, transfers be brought back to the Board of Finance for Right. After 2011, the wordings would change. Okay. Any questions, comments from the Board? Mr. Walsh. Does the bond amount just get reduced, or do we already have the $85,000, and then we're just putting that back in the general fund? Um, we bond, we try to bond only what we think we're going to spend in the next year, so this has not been bonded. Okay. So we're just going to borrow less. Yes. Okay. Any other questions, comments from the board? Mr. Becker? Do, do you know why it went up on the boiler? I mean, they're, they're usually pretty good about picking those numbers. Is that something we might anticipate moving forward, just them costing more? Or? Mr. Cullen? Yeah. See you there. Thanks. Good evening. Good evening. Thank I'm Tom you. Cullen, Director of Operations. Um, the the boiler for the Ward High School project, um, it's, a, it's called a sectional boiler. So it's not a large boiler that you purchase. They come in with a crane and set one big boiler. It's a sectional, so all the sections have to be bought, put together. Uh, copper and steel, we're told, uh, has gone up uh, dramatically this year. So that's why the bid came in a lot more than we expected. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Any other questions? Mrs. LeClaire? Um, has the project been finished now or it's... Uh, we haven't started. You haven't started it yet. Okay. Well, we hope to get this approved and, and get closer to writing a PO so they can start ordering the, the work. There's three boilers at Ward. Um, one of them is being replaced and the other two are existing but they're fairly new one was put in in 2008 one was put in 2012 
Okay. And so we're comfortable with these changes that um, these, this is the right, yes. right amount now? Yes. Okay. Just a quick question, Mr. Cullen. Is it the same boiler you were originally looking to purchase? Same type, same model, same brand? Yes. Okay. It's just $50,000 more than you anticipated. Yeah. When the bids came in, we were quite surprised. We did value engineering, uh, called in the contractors, uh, talked to them about what happened, and well, the good news is we're getting a more favorable square foot price for the Mill Hill roof. Extremely good. $18 a square foot is fantastic. 18 Yeah, okay. we've been seeing um, our consultant has been telling us to budget 25 to $27 a square foot. We've been seeing in the range of 21 to 23 Mill Hills was excellent. Okay. Any other questions, comments from the board? Any questions, any comments from the public? Seeing none, back to the board. Okay, this motion is before us as read. Are we ready to vote? Yes. All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous. Okay. Item number three. Take a deep breath. This is a long resolution here. Let me just see something. Okay. To hear, consider, and adopt the resolution that the Board of Finance authorizes that all of the surplus appropriations generated by closed projects allocated to fiscal years 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, and $31,364 of surplus appropriations generated by closed projects allocated to fiscal year 2007 be reallocated to offset and to eliminate the appropriation deficit generated by the closed projects allocated to fiscal year 2009 and following such reallocation that each of the accounts related to the closed projects be closed including all accounts for fiscal years 2003, 2004, 2006, 2007, 2000, and 2008. Nothing herein shall affect the open projects. So can I have a motion to bring this before the board, Mrs. Alvin, and a second for Mrs. LeClaire. So this motion is now for us. So I'll try and summarize, and Mr. Mayor, you can help me out here. What we have is we had 84 projects, 79 are closed. The projects were authorized by 17 different bonding resolutions between 2003 and 2010. And if you see on your first page of the reallocation authorization, you see that we have excess in 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, and 2007, 2008, 2010 totaling $587,220. In 2009, however, we had an appropriation deficit of $541,201. So we're being asked to consider taking the excess of 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, and $31,000, $31,364 of 2007 to eliminate the deficit of $541,000, right? Therefore, leaving $46,000 sur surplus that will go into the undesignated surplus fund. Okay. Any further comment, Mr. Mayor, you want to add before I turn it over to the board? No, that pretty much explains it. I mean, uh, these. Uh, these from 203 to 209, cleaning up the, uh, uh, you know, the open the open accounts, the open capital accounts. This is the net result. So it's actually pretty straightforward. You set it very very well. Just taking the the net deficits and appropriating them to the to the positive, and we end up uh, forty one thousand uh, dollars to the good, which flows through miscellaneous uh, revenue through the uh, uh, fund balance. And since we changed the way we word the bonding resolutions in 2011, just like we saw that in, in item number two, 
we shouldn't have to do this again in in such a way for those years for those years <laughs> well yeah like like theoretically you know the finance department is watching these on top of these and monitoring these on an ongoing basis which we are okay I'll turn it over to the board any questions from the board this is Claire okay. so so what created the 2009 deficit and is that okay that we've been carrying a deficit or should that have come to us pr prior to this well, I mean, theoretically, in a, in a perfect world, it wouldn't have happened. Someone would have caught it, uh, and and they would have said, "Hey, you're over, you're over budget. Quit spending the money." Uh, as to why it happened, I can't say specifically. It could have been. It's before it, you. It's it's you know it's, it's a primarily a DPW paving project. There could have been items that were uh, misclassified from one paving project to another paving project. Uh, you know specifically. I have no idea. The point here is actually a, I mean, that's more D, a DPW kind of operational issue, which is, you know, from years ago. I, I think the focus here, from my perspective, is simply the financial uh, record keeping and, and uh, you know, as you, as, and, you know, cleaning up the books and making sure we monitor going forward. So it's not one particular project, or, or it was it was It was one particular project. If you look at... Uh, page three through right. three through six five. you know that has all the projects listed the original proposition the amounts expended and the overages and underages so you could actually go through it project by project um, so that's that one's on page five it's the third one down under the fiscal year two zero zero nine um, And then can I ask one, have you reviewed this change with the auditors and are they in agreement with it to clean yes. this all up? Okay. Okay, Mr. Clare. Yeah. Okay, any other questions from board members? Mr. Walsh? Well, following up on Ms. LeClaire's um, comments, I mean, I think it's clear that they're looking at the materials that the reason why it's over is for a $709,000 deficit which we overspent in one year in 2009 and you don't know why I wasn't here okay I'm looking out in the crowd and I don't see the department head here and I don't see his the guy who handles the asphalt paving yeah, where, department, where, department, where, heads where, on department, heads? department heads on vacation and mr. Bartlett wasn't available this evening he wasn't available no so he knew about that that this meeting was coming up and there was a seven hundred and nine thousand yeah. dollar um deficit in his thing and he was unavailable. Well I think your answer is kind of unacceptable. I mean, don't you under do you think so, Bob? I mean I mean I think the focus tonight and this motion yeah. is based upon cleaning up the financial records of the town. Yeah. I think what happened in 2009 from an operational perspective is a separate and distinct issue so what are you suggesting you're going to have you're going to have mr bartlett and and maybe a joe come to our next board of finance meeting and give a full presentation on how they overspent our account by seven hundred and nine thousand dollars out of their budget that year because that's what happened I mean, out of, of I a mean, non-recurring capital item budget, that's the correct statement. Okay. I'm, I'm just saying asphalt paving. It doesn't say non-recurring. Yeah, these are all non-recurring. These are, they're all non-recurring. These are all non-recurring. So are we going to get an explanation for this? Because uh, it, seems it, like, you, it seems like you have two options. The, the board could vote to have them come and re report. You yourself could meet with them one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, and to get your own satisfaction or understanding of the reasons. Okay, I would like to know. I don't, I don't want to hold the whole board up if no one else cares about it. So if I'm the only one who cares about it, I will meet with the department head and um, I, I think Scott if no one else cares about this. Mrs. Alvin? Sure. 
I'm not sure care is the maybe the right word that would express how everyone would feel. Um, I think everyone cares about the information behind any item that we're always looking at. But I would ask of the current fiscal officer, perhaps, or I, in, I can just make a general statement, that I would think that these numbers would have been um, provided to this body before this date. These date back to 2009. When did you take your position, Mr. Mayor? A year ago. I mean, somebody else was in this job, and I would ask why, if you're bringing this to us, why it wasn't brought to us sooner. But you're trying to, what you're saying to us is clean up the books, correct? Correct. Um, and, you know, there may be a set of questions to ask uh, DPW, but there might have been questions to ask the finance department before this date. I mean, we're talking about accounting items as well as work that's been done that a budget was overspent. And, and it's possible that this body knew about $709,000 in 2009 or 2010, but yet the accounting was never taken care of and cleaning up the books. That's very possible. So um, I just don't have all those answers. I don't know if we're looking to place responsibility. I don't know where it gets placed, Mr. Walsh. I'm not looking to re I presume that there's a reason why it's seven hundred nine thousand dollars over I mean from my experience with the um, DPW and their and their paving they always seem to be monitoring it so something must have happened it's just we just don't know what it is I, I think I mean so I mean it's, it's been my experience that something happened something happened in a previous year some project I, I, there's got to be. I think there were many projects going on somewhere, um, you know, and it's, you know, and, and 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 there's probably some projects that were maybe operational projects that were classified as non-recurring projects. Um, there might have been some non-recurring projects that got uh, booked to the wrong non-recurring project. There might have been excess funds spent. It would be my guess. It was a combination of all three of those. Well, and I, I really haven't seen the Department of Public Works over m my number of years in being involved just decide to start spending extra money on paving that they know they don't have. So, Well, if you remember, Mr. Walsh, round in 10, we started transitioning the paving into their operating or really trying to wind down to on the non To move the bonding to operating. Yeah. So there was a lot of issues going around this time frame. And if you, mm -hmm. look at, if you looked at the detail stuff, there was a project in 08. There was a project in 10 all having to do with asphalt. So there was at least three, if not four to five, in the operational budget of DPW at the time as well. So there was about four to five, if not some of these other ones from the earlier years that had paving involved in them. Mm -hmm. For example, I know I spoke with Scotty before on the Lally Boulevard reconstruction. And if you looked at the 05, it was clearly a few years prior, but nothing was spent on the 105 authorization and that was all related to paving so there was a lot of paving accounts going on at that time in addition to transitioning from the non-recurring to the operating so I think as a result of that there was paving going on there was also a fire suppression going on at Hoydens Hill in addition to another 2.6 million dollars so I think there was a lot of paving going on throughout the town at that at that point what I could do is ask Scott for a breakdown of the the full two six or two five that was spent. Yeah, that that that, that might be helpful. I mean, I, in the end, I mean, in, in the end, on this resolution, I have no problem. I I'm glad that cleanup is being done, and it's it's and it's actually benefits us. Correct, some money's going to the general fund at the end of the day mm -hmm. after all of these cleanups. So I, I think it's a good process to to go through. Um, I don't know whether it makes sense for Scott to write up why it was, and maybe there's just reasons we don't know. But um, there's nothing we could do about the $709,000 from 2009 anyway. So 
um, in regards to tonight, I'm, I don't have a problem with voting on it, but I think that number, out of all the numbers, and there's lots of small numbers of $1,700 and back and forth and whatever, that number just stands out on, out of all the pages, that number just jumps out off the page. So I think that we can get some type of explanation, whether if Scott wants to come, I mean, I'm not trying to force him to come out on a night that, you know, he's not getting paid for or whatever, if he could do a write-up. I, I, I think we should probably, only because the number's so large, in one year. So something must have happened. There's got to be a rational reason other than, oh, I just decided to pave, um, you know, 10 extra miles of road <laughs> without any authorization. So I, um, I know it's not going to be that. So maybe he can just provide us some highlights and, and you guys can email to us. I, I don't know how everybody else feels about that. I think that's a good idea myself. Okay. We'll get on it. I mean, just generalized whatever. I, I don't need it. I, and I'm just telling you from my perspective as one member, I don't need it like, you know, well, we were over, uh, you know, by $1,324 on this account and a whole listing of those. But just a generalized, you know, in general categories. Or maybe there's one reason. I'm not sure. I, 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 like I said earlier, I think it's probably a, a multiple number of reasons. Yep. And we'll try to identify and quantify to the best just of roughly the ability just, given, yeah. given the, uh, also in the understanding that that's pre-munis. Oh, okay. Oh, that's so the previous system? Okay. That's pre-munis, so that's the Phoenix system. Okay. So we don't have, uh, you know, we have data, but it's not as clear, not as accessible, not Can as it, readily available. That raises a really um, important question for me, because that leads into the second question I had, which was, is that the reason why our system didn't catch that happening? Because I thought we were, well, I mean, you have when you allocated when you, when you, amount, you can't go over it. When, when you s use the term system, that's, as you know, when you talked about the, uh, uh, the appraisal, mm -hmm. <laughs> was, you know, it's a broad word. You know, if you think, if you use the word system you know, in a broad perspective, the system is the, is the finance department and all the policies, procedures, and, and activities that go on in there. That system should have had a policy that, that monitored this and caught this. Uh, the specific software system did not. Okay. But our current MUNIS system the current would MUNIS not system allow you to go over it without authorization? Not without... Yeah, it, it's possible, but unlikely, and we and we but we monitor it to make sure. All right. Yeah. So I'm I'm telling as an individual member, I don't know how everybody else feels that if we could get something, just a general write up or I, think, I don't even know work worksheet, just a generalized categories. Yeah, we'll of, see what we can find out and do our best right. as we always do. Well, yeah. I think we're all in agreement. Other than that, I'm in favor of going forward with this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Mr. Becker. Thank you. Um, yeah, and, and I agree with Mr. Walsh. I think the only thing is that this is now, this has come up at, at quarterlies and, and, and now it's coming up today where it seems like if they can't get to the meeting, which is understandable, obviously people have, have personal things, sometimes they can't make it, but we should, we should have the information at the meeting on things that are going to stick out. And I would think if you were to look through here, clearly the $700,000, it's very likely flipping through here that, that the board was going to have questions on that item. So I just think if maybe in the future, if we can try to focus on making sure that if, if they can't be here or maybe ask those to be here um, to, to try to get explanations so that we aren't sitting here then voting on something and then asking for the information after the fact. I, I, I think that would yeah, be helpful. I, I understand what you're saying. As I said so, earlier, this is not an operational issue. This is a financial issue. You're voting on clearing, clearing up the books based upon known and relevant data. Co correct. I understand. I understand that that's what we're doing here, but clearly there's a need for the history on these items. If I were to try like to identify everything, I think you might question. I would spend all my time researching. I just think a seven hundred thousand dollar item, but that's that's I mean, my Bobby, thought. Fairness. Serious, serious, seriously. Yeah, um, I, know. I mean, but, seriously, but seven seven hundred thousand dollars on this whole list. I understand. There, there's no, not no even a number to close to that on this I understand. list. Yeah, I'm, but I'm just those I'm comments just, were not necessary. So. The, the other thing relating to the to the bonds here, I know that this this comes up sometimes. I know I've been asked. I think I've asked finance sometimes to get a better handle on what's outstanding. I do like the way this, you know, spreadsheet is set up. I'm wondering if in the future, maybe periodically at the quarterlies or something to that effect, we can start getting an update on on where bonds stand that we've approved because I don't think we really get anything regularly to keep a handle on that. And, and I don't know, maybe refer that out to the 
reports committee and let them sort of decide what we would need and what would be helpful, or if nothing at all, but, but I think a conversation along those lines would be helpful because looking at this is, is I think, a, a, good, a good monitoring tool, but, but also, you know, it's, it's, a, it's very helpful to see this. Um, so it would be nice to see this more periodically, not just on the smaller projects, but on the larger ones. I know that they're fluid situations, but it just gives us a, a better monitoring tool, which probably would have been another check and balance on top of what you've now put in place moving forward. So I just, I, well, I, being I, chair of the reports chair, committee, so. we'd be glad to, when we set up a meeting, we'll, we'll talk about it. Yep. I, and think that's it's, it. I think it's a good idea. We can I'm talk about it. Wait. Great. Thanks. <laughs> Mr. Walsh is on that committee. <laughs> can hardly wait. <laughs> as is Mr. Stone. And Mr. Becker, you're more than welcome to come as a guest if you like. Mrs. LeClaire, did you have uh, a question? Oh, I just wanted to clarify. Does this include the entire appropriation for each year? This yes. List? Okay. Thank you. Okay, so now with Munis, we don't have to worry about, and, and plus with the new way we write the bonding resolutions, we don't have to worry about these items coming up again even after 2010, 2011. Well, it has nothing to do with the way you write the bonding resolutions. Munis is certainly a help, and the fact that we have systems in place that we're monitoring these actively helps. Except that with the bonding resolutions, now we allocate certain amounts to each right. item. But, you can, but that doesn't prevent you from going over by itself. But it does prevent 84 coming to us at once. Just like in item number two, we took care of it tonight. But if they had... If nobody was monitoring it, it wouldn't have come before you, even if it was written differently. That's I guess we're point. assuming, I guess it's, I'm assuming <laughs> someone is monitoring. Yes. <laughs> right. And it will come up. Yes. As they happen. Correct. Like item number two with the boiler. Okay. Correct. Okay. Someone is monitoring them, right? Yes. Okay. And I assume for the Board of Ed, too, because there's some Board of Ed items on here that I see. All right. Okay. Any other questions, comments from the board? So the motion is before us as read. So we are ready to vote. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Any comments from the public? Seeing none, back to the board. Is the board ready to vote? Yes. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Unanimous. Very good. We are on to item number four, Riverfield, Riverfield Elementary. So item number four, to hear, consider, and adopt the bond resolution entitled a resolution amending and restating a resolution adopted by the representative town meeting on June 24th, 2013, entitled a resolution appropriating $14,485,766 for the costs allocated, I'm sorry, the costs associated with the expansion and renovation of Riverfield Elementary School and authorizing the issuance of bonds to finance such appropriation to increase the appropriation and bond authorization to $16 $349,319. So moved. No, just looking for the total. What's that, about $1.8 million? $1.863553. Very good. Okay. Mrs. Alvin, second. Can I have a second? Mrs. LeClaire. Okay, this motion is before us. Mr. Quinn. Any any questions from the board? Comments? Yes. Yeah. Good evening. Okay. Um, I would briefly explain what went on here. Um, we went in. We were going to expand the uh, the gym. We're pulling down one wall and enlarging the gym outwards uh, to do that they went in to take the uh, the wall they tested the wall cut through it am i bad news sorry i only have one vocal cord so what can i tell you um, but uh, 
we, when we did the testing, when we cut through the wall, uh, we found out that there was waterproof felt, uh, which was uh, full of PCBs. Okay. Um, How's that? That better? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, anyways, the, the felt inside the walls was contaminated with PCBs. Um, the, uh, we act, have to file a report with the federal government, EPA, obviously, uh, and a, a remediation plan. Uh, we thought at first that we could keep the uh, PCB felt uh, in the walls without having to do anything about it on um, past experience with the EPA because it was totally encapsulated. However, the EPA over the last two years, three years, has uh, decided that that was an inappropriate behavior on their part. And they said that, uh, yeah, you can uh, not fix it right now, but to go on with your project, you have 10 years to fix it. So you either fix it now or wait 10 years to do it. Uh, but either way, it is illegal. You need to get the PCBs out. Um, met with uh, the first selectman and the board, the uh, committee went out and took a look at the cost structure. Because we're really talking cost here. Okay? The EPA already told us, you will fix it. So it's not a function of whether we don't or we will. Uh, it, we will fix it within 10 years. And it came down to what is the most cost-effective way of handling this issue. Uh, we recommended to the Board of Selectmen that they tag it on to this project, which reduces the setup cost, reduces a lot of the other ancillary costs, comes out with a 1,863,000, where if we waited for one year where this project is over and all the trucks have left and we started doing it then, you're going to be up by your six to $700,000 in cost. If you waited the full 10 years, the price, in our estimate, would minimally double, okay? And that was done on past uh, performance. My opinion is given that PCBs has become such a, a predominant problem in all the school systems throughout the country, okay, that we're gonna run out of landfill to put PCBs. It's gonna cost us more and more and more. So I'm not sure that the number of 3.5 million 10 years bears the scrutiny of time. So we came back to the town, to the Board of Selectmen, said your choices are to spend a million, eight, 60 now, or wait and spend more every year um, to do something that we have to do. And the Board of Selectmen elected to uh, fund it now, recommend it now, and which we did. And now we're here to ask you to also recommend the same thing. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. Mrs. Alvin. Having read through this material and with the comments from Mr. Quinn just now, uh, I'll be supporting this because not only are they in there doing the work now, which is the most efficient time to do this, if you, as he has very appropriately said, you could wait this out five or ten years, um, you'll you will absolutely see cost overruns from the number we're looking at, or an inflated cost from what we're looking at now. Um, but you don't know what the regs will be in that time either. And the regs are right now we know what they are. I would say this is the best time we're in this building and um, it's open. And the last point to consider if the town didn't support this work um, and knowing uh, what the advocacy is among educational communities, I think that you then run into other problems. Um, so. I will be supporting this. I hope everyone else will. Um, there may be questions, but I'm not certain that this is a long item to debate. It's pretty straightforward. Thank you, Mrs. Alman. Any other comments, questions from the board? Mr. Walsh. 
is there going to be any change to the dimensions of this gym or add-ons or to make it better with it that's contained in the number? No. Okay, what's the contingency amount that you have in your budget currently? Um, what's that, 600000 yes. 600000 Are you use? excuse me? Owner's contingency. Owner's contingency. Okay, are you using any of that towards this project? Oh, yes. Not you're to, using the whole towards, 600? Not to the PCB project. Yeah. No. no. But to the overall 14800000 project. All right. Um, and I'm not sure whether this is meant for your, I guess, my question is, I guess my thought is, we knew we had PCBs in Osborne, and it was the same vintage building, correct? They were built at around the same time? I believe so. And if we knew there was PCBs there, uh, I question why we're not building in a larger contingency, <laughs> since we know that we already had a building that had PCBs in it. Um, and we know that these are need to be taken care of. In so actuality, uh, 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 Mr. Walsh, when we started this project, Osborne Hill wasn't an issue. Oh, the windows weren't discovered no, at that no. point yet? Okay. All right. I mean, clearly I think the, you know, we, the time to do it is now, as Ms. Albin said, uh, the building's being worked on as opposed to tearing this building open again uh, within the next, sometime within the next 10 years with some price escalations. and. Tom, I think your point's well taken about uh, costs getting more expensive in that area and trying to find landfills that will accept it. Um, and it's like pay me now or pay me later uh, at this point in time. Um, it's an unfortunate thing, but I, I don't see a way around it, especially if the federal government EPA is requiring that it be taken out. It's just when. So uh, based on the fact that I think the BOE has adjusted their waterfall adjustments to be able to still squeeze this in with their project layout, um, I, I will support it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions, comments from the board? Thank you, Mr. Wall. Mm -hmm. No? Um, um, uh, is there a ch chance that the, um, what was it, the EPA will change and let you in cap Capsulate the PPCs again? From what I've seen from their attorneys, no. No. Okay. It's currently encapsulated right now. Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it bears no risk to the children in the school. Okay? It's encapsulated. Right. Okay? But they, from their attorneys, uh, they, they were quite adamant in saying no. Is so we're under a requirement that in, within 10 years we got to fix it. That we get to take care of it, yes. Okay. Thank you, Ms. LeClaire. You know, just, just to follow up on Mr. Walsh's point, on with these school projects, we almost have to assume we're going to have this issue, and we'll have to, I think, try and figure out a way on how to price this in the first time around. Mm -hmm. Because uh, do, these buildings are going to have PCBs in them. Yeah. Depending on the vintage, yeah, if they're yeah. built around the same. Yeah, so, you, so we all understand, this is not the only PCB in the building. We had $440,000 allocated for remediation of PCBs, mm -hmm. and we are spending that. And we have a remediation plan of all the rest of PCBs and caulkings and you know, paint and wherever. So we were aware there were PCBs. What we didn't, we weren't aware of was the magnitude of this. Right. And our, oh, consultants, but your point is well taken. our consultants thought we would be covered, correct? With the yeah. yeah, based on what they knew, yes. Based on what they knew. My, my only point is we know now with Osborne, with Riverfield, that there's a lot more to this than, we're, than we, th we, we thought a year and a half ago. Uh, two and a half. A two and a half. Been a long, <laughs> been a long, <laughs> long road, sir. It's almost we, are, we have to have days. the assumption that every project we do for a school that was built around yeah. those years, yes. mm -hmm. we're going to have a, a major problem. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I'd be a fool's errand yes. if we don't learn from this. Yes. Okay? Yep. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Mrs. LeClaire. Just a quick one. Um, and is the rest of the budget with a project within budget? Is We're going out to bid, and I'll tell you as soon as they come back in. Okay. Thank you. It is our plan to be within budget. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. I do have a question back to Mr. Mayor. 
in regards to your comparison of debt service worksheet. That was part of our packet. Do you have a copy? Is this is what we just discussed included in your worksheet? Yeah. <laughs> Um, this, this actually, um, the comparison chart you have includes uh, this increase plus some refinements to the, the model plus uh, evaluation of all the Storm Sandy projects plus uh, some early input from all the departments. Uh, that will be finalized with respect to the for the September capital workshop capital planning workshop um, so I would think that between now and September the, the debt requirement will probably shrink rather than grow because it, it's not because we kind of like loaded it all in here and, and what we did as part of the process was was uh, move things, uh, apologize for that, I thought that was off. What was, uh, we moved some things out to, uh, to adjust for the increases that we were looking at. Okay. So what we're looking at is an increase, just on, on the bottom graph there, an increase in capital projects, an increase in non-recurring, an increase in reimbursements, but altogether an increase of $16 million. Am I reading that right? From January 2014 to August 2014? What is that number? What is that telling us? That, um, the, the, um, what that tells you is that the uh, authorization requests that are fully loaded in the system with the inclusion of another year beyond, so there's another year included there, um, that there is that, that increase, uh, that net increase, yes. Okay, so $60 million more dollars since right. January 2000. But shifting the timing of them you can see that the uh, the the uh, savings in uh, uh, in debt service is two point three million dollars, two point nine million dollars. Right. Okay. Are there any questions on this worksheet? No. Seeing none, go to the public. Any comments from the public? Seeing none, back to the board. Any any questions, comments from the board? One last time. Seeing none, we're ready to vote. As the motion as it was read. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item number. Item number five, to hear, consider, and approve the memorandum of understanding between the Town of Fairfield and the State of Connecticut Department of Public Works, now DAS, regarding the state rebuilding the Fairfield Regional Fire Training Center. Can I have a motion? So Mr. Moved. Walsh, second. Mr. Becker, yes, sir. Thank you very much. Very well. Mr. Tracy. Thank you very much. Assistant Chief Chris Tracy, uh, Chief of Training for the Fire Department, and I hope not to have to go through any of these, but they're here if you'd like, either now or after. Uh, I've sent you a letter detailing the uh, basically decade by decade uh, development of the uh, Fairfield Regional Fire School, also known as Captain Joseph S. Elias Training Center, and um, our need for what was to be a 20-year building, uh, now in its third life and near its, its end of that. Um, 
and also of the proposed improvement project. Uh, and finally, line by line of the MOU. Um, I'd be happy to go through them in detail, but I think having had a copy of it, you've probably already done that. And so I guess the thing I'm here to suggest uh, for the current members of this body and for the members previous, uh, including Mr. Kiley, um, is to thank you for your uh, faith several years ago in the site remediation of a little over $100,000. I think the $10 million return will, uh, uh, will speak well to all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Certainly. Questions? Mr. Walsh. The only question I have, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Tracy, is the um, I was on the Board of Selectmen when we approved this, and it was a very good presentation. I think it's a great deal for the, for the town and for the region. Um, but every time I drive down there or go to the dump, I look to see construction starting, and it still has not started. And uh, are we still waiting for one of the other sites to com be complete before we move on, or is there just no state fund money right now to do the project? No, in fact, uh, I have a Gantt chart I'd be happy to distribute as well uh, that shows the uh, recognition of need back in 99 and the uh, several hundred thousand dollars invested actually by Mr. Dickman uh, and his uh, peers by the uh, General Assembly back in 2002 for a five-year renovation plan. Okay. Uh, we are now uh, 12 years uh -huh. into it with two buildings done. Uh, I'm happy to report we were able to put Fairfield next in line. At the time this was in initiated, uh, Fairfield was last because we were the most viable school. Many of those were, uh, others were uh, condemned. Um, we are now near same. And uh, the good news is, and part of why I'm here before this body, several years after the initial remediation was funded, um, but not completed. We waited until the state was ready before actually Mr. Michelangelo completed what Mr. White had put in place. Um, so the good news is these are the drawings. I have uh, a program manager prepared to finalize these. We have uh, a bidder uh, have, having one. Um, there were four bidders. One was a seven million and three were ten million dollar uh, bids. Um, but the process being what it was, uh, the one of the ten million dollar bidders who also completed the Springfield, Massachusetts Fire Academy and many others, but that one's notable for its uh, excellence. Um, are, is in place. So their Gantt chart shows a sign-off uh, in September of the uh, uh, Attorney General, Mr. Jepson, and uh, bonding in uh, late August or uh, if, depending on bonding, commission's uh, plan, uh, possibly late September. But they then have a 365-day completion requirement. So uh, we will have uh, the project funded and it's already essentially the CGA has already uh, allocated the funds, they simply haven't, or authorized the funds, I beg your pardon, but they haven't been allo allocated. Uh, so the, the charge card has been uh, committed but not yet run. Mm -hmm. And so when that's done in September, we will then have, or consigli will have 10 or 12 months to complete. And then a 90-day punch list requirement to fulfill that as well. So um, while we won't see uh, trucks down there, um, probably, as their Gantt chart shows, until January, because there is about a three to four month planning, permitting, et cetera, period. Um, they have committed to have this project completed with a three bay apparatus room, a uh, four classroom uh, facility, and a burn building uh, to be utilized, as we are already, by multiple agencies in town and throughout the region uh, by uh, September of next year. That's great. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Mrs. LeClaire. Okay. Do we need to plan for increased um, utilities and maintenance for the building? That's and actually a great question, and it was asked several years ago as well. Um, we have several aspects of that. The state does provide us operational funding annually. Uh, right now it's in the neighborhood of $70,000. Um, the expectation as it's completed would be that the state would follow its model for the New Haven School, which was completed several years ago in Hartford, which was completed just last year, and raise our funding accordingly. Uh, I had expected that at that time, but I also expected the project at that mm -hmm. time. So that is, in fact, something that we've discussed with Mr. Barnes and the uh, um, Office of Fiscal uh, Analysis. But in addition, the current building is not what I would consider a, a, a model of economic excellence as far as utilities. And the uh, program that was accepted is a lead silver uh, above what was ne necessary. So between the LED lighting and the uh, 
uh, energy efficiency of all of it, uh, my expectation is, in fact, it will be lower than our current uh, expenses. That would be great. Thank yeah. you. Uh, and can I ask one quick one? Um, also, do we have insurance coverage so if people from out of our department come to train that we're covered if someone gets injured or hurt or something? Absolutely. We require from every agency that comes in outside of Fairfield um, the same indemnification that the state requires at the State Academy, which is to say, uh, for example, if Bridgeport comes to, to train at the Fairfield Academy, we keep Fairfield and the Fairfield Regional Fire School, which are essentially the same, uh, indemnified uh, separately and distinctly within our uh, insurances. We maintain that annually and uh, um, have yet in its history to have a problem, but we are prepared should there be one. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. McClare. Mr. Walsh? Does everybody who come here out of the region, they're, 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 they're working, right? That's considered part of their job. That would be a worker's comp claim or no? It's a great question. Again, um, some of them are volunteers, okay. but they are also considered worker's comp claims. Uh, Mr. Becker, being a volunteer for the Southport Volunteer Fire Department, mm -hmm. can speak to that. Um, so yes, they would be within their jurisdiction and their agency a, a, a comp claim, yeah. um, but uh, we serve it's actually remarkable all the way down to Greenwich and all the way up. I've had students from Manchester and uh, uh, New London come down for classes. Uh, their departments indemnify them, cover them, um, and uh, in fact the state separately for the instructors uh, indemnifies instructors uh, that are working at a regional facility and that are state certified. So we have several levels of indemnif indemnification. Okay, thank you Mr. Walsh. Mr. Becker. Yeah, I, thank you for thank coming you. here uh, regarding this. Um, one thing I think also which you can maybe shed a little bit of light on, but um, not being the first has helped us in some ways in that other schools have been done some construction, so now we're going to be able to kind of build off of those techniques to end up with a better facility, better buildings. So I think to some extent waiting will, will pay off for us. Is that... It's absolutely correct. One example would be the burn building. There were two different types of construction in burn buildings. Uh, the New Haven type was a port in place, and the, um, uh, the, the second type up in Hartford had problems um, with delamination of their uh, thermal resistance. Uh, so the panels that were protecting it were, were uh, peeling, essentially. We obviously are opting for the New Haven uh, construction type as a result. Um, as we've talked about at the state level with the Education Committee of Training Directors for the regional schools, each will benefit from the previous. So certainly the last one hopefully will learn from the lessons of its uh, predecessors. But we have certainly learned from both the Hartford and New Haven project. And uh, again, I'm very pleased that the chosen builder has built many facilities of this kind uh, and they remain uh, at the highest level of excellence within our industry. So, um, yes, we've learned and probably, I'm afraid, we'll pass some lessons forward to the next building. Um, and uh, the only other thing is just thanks for the amount of time that you have put. I mean, obviously, my involvement with the fire department, I happen to see the amount of hours, but it goes far beyond any sort of requirements through your job and even to your job as the training director. Um, it's meeting after meeting after meeting and then the willpower of pushing this along with what is arguably a very difficult task with the state. But we as a town um, will significantly benefit by keeping this in our town, at never move, you know, going somewhere else, but having it here, being able to send all of our personnel while on duty. There's obviously costs and whatnot that we actually don't have to withstand in a sense because it's right in our backyard. So I think it's it's. Yeah, I'm certainly looking forward to it being there. So, well, you're very welcome, and on <laughs> uh, on behalf of all the training directors that have been there since Captain Elias, um, I'm certainly standing on the shoulders of giants. But uh, look forward to passing a, a, a fine uh, facility forward to my successor. I'm good. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Becker. Mr. Walsh, and um, I'll follow up with Mr. Becker's comments. Um, as Assistant Chief Tracy, you've done a great job with this and following, and I know it must have been a frustrating process all these years. One of the questions I have, though, is about that, in, in that I know I was on the Board of Select when we approved it. The first selectman signed this in April 2011, followed by the last signature of the state in August 9, 2011. Why are we here tonight at the Board of Finance three years later? Well, because the state 
operates in a land of steady habits in glacial speed. Okay. And so in fairness to all the bodies, after tonight I'll be speaking following up to the Board of Selectmen uh, and your successor, uh, if Mr. Kelly can make it back, I hope, uh, and um, later in the month going through it with the RTM and with the uh, Board of Zoning, uh, Planning and Zoning, but I beg your pardon, in, in, its, in its planning capacity, and uh, following up with the Fire Commission. Because what was a memorandum of, uh, of understanding in um, 2011, effectively, has become solid documents and um, a physical structure and a $10 million bond that we can actually identify. As I've said, it took three years to get here. It took 15 to get a five-year plan in place. So um, it wouldn't have been uh, in good form, I think, to come to you and say, will you please approve this uh, without very much information. I think we have a very uh, solid body of information now to ask for this body and the other body's approval. Um, so that we can move forward. But the protection was built into that MOU that this would have to take place. And so to do this at a time when we had sufficient information that I could answer any of these questions seemed prudent. Okay. Okay, Mr. Walsh? Yes. Any other questions or comments? Thank you very much. Thank you very Appreciate much. Appreciate your time Thank and you your all. effort. Okay, so any comments from the public? Back to the board. Be ready to vote. Yes. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Vote is unanimous. Takes us. Thank you. Takes us to item number six, our final item, to hear, consider, and act upon any communication. Mrs. LeClaire. Um, I received a letter from our auditor uh, um, at Cohen Resnick. Uh, Joseph Centipani, and they're beginning their audit for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2014. <laughs> and um, there's a letter that they would like us to answer certain questions. Um, and it's a standard audit letter um, that every company that's audited has to um, respond to. And so there is a question for the Board of Finance on here that I'm going to read to you. And if anyone has anything, I ask you to come to me privately at another time because I don't think it's something we really want to discuss here at the Board. Um, and so the questions are as follows. Based on discussion and inquiry with all the members of the Board of Finance, please provide the appropriate responses to the following questions. Are you aware of any instances of fraud within the town? Yes, no, and please describe. Uh, two, do you have any reason to suspect fraud may have be occurring within the town? And it's yes, no, please describe where and how. Um, three, have you received any communications from employees, former employees, regulators, residents, or others alleging fraud? Yes, no, and please explain. Uh, and then I think it's the last question. Have you seen any changes in employees or management behavior that would have you, um, that would lead you to be concerned that fraud may be occurring? Yes, no, and please explain. So I just ask if there's anything anyone would like to discuss to just please see me. Uh, the audit committee will be meeting either the end of August or beginning of September, and we'd like to be able to discuss that and complete the letter. Uh, so that's it. Okay. Thank you very much, Mrs. LeClaire. Any other acts of communication, act upon any communication? Mr. Mayor? Nothing? Nothing. Okay. okay. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, so <laughs> you did that quicker than I finished my sentence. Second? Can I have a second? Mr. Becker? All those in favor? Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you very much.